patterns and graphs. So the reason why people go ahead and set graphs is so they can see a pattern easier when they have a couple of sets of data. So if you look, what we're going to be talking about is just kind of how that relationship develops. So the uh, graphs can be helpful to see patterns in data, as I just said. Uh, the, there's two scales. You have the horizontal and the vertical. This would be the vertical here. This would be the horizontal here. So, uh, and they measure different things that there's a relationship between. It can be a whole range of different things. The intervals are the difference between the values on the scale. So for example here, the difference between this uh, this one right here and this one right here, they vary a little bit. It starts off at 1, then 2, then 2, then 3. So this, this scale, or this graph is a little bit misleading, but the intervals change a little bit, which normally we don't want, but I thought this was an interesting graph anyhow. So to keep consistency, and I'll do the consistency in the next one just as an example, in the next graph that we look at, it's a good idea that the first column should be the horizontal scale and the second column should be the vertical scale when you've got a data set. I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute. And look at the data to see what the intervals should be, because you want not a huge amount of different interval intervals. You can have as many intervals or as few intervals as you want, but just for it to be useful, it's important to actually have it that way. Uh, have it uh, be 6 to 10, because that makes it a little bit easier to see. And you should be able to estimate the numbers if you need to uh, between the graphs. So what I'm talking about is, if we look here, this would be an example of another graph, and this I just pulled up uh, yesterday, uh, actually today, on the 24th. And this is gas prices, which are going up quite rapidly, as you can see. And this is the USA, US average, and so Start off at 335 about a month ago, and then it's gone up this far. So if we were to look at this, the graph here, it represents it, represents it again, and it goes up a couple of cents and then three cents for most of it. And down here, it goes up a day by day by day as an average. So this one's a pretty good graph. Again, I don't know why it has it going up by two cents there. That's strange, but we'll go with it. And so for example, if I was given this data set right here, down here, and I was asked, well, graph that data set. What I do is I'd say, well, hours to miles run. And so for two hours, you run 10 miles. For 2.8 uh, 2 miles, you'd run 14 miles. Or for 2.8 hours, you'd run 14 miles. For 3.2 hours for 16 miles and for 3.6 mile hours you'd run 18 miles and what I do is I'd start off by looking at coming up with some sort of plan and uh, organized sort of way of graphing this and so I already came up with this part here and remember that first one you put on the bottom so this would be hours on the bottom And then over here would be miles run. It's a little bit hard to write on an angle here. But we'll do our best. Actually, I'm going to move that over. So I just realized I'm going to need to write down all that stuff right there. So I'm just going to write down miles here. You need to have some space. That's an important thing as well. So I'm kind of glad I did that miles run. And so now I need to look at this data set and figure out, well, how do I break it down into uh, intervals? And so I look, I see, well, hey, I've got this first one here, hours. I start off at 2 and I go to 3.6. So if I wanted to, I could start off of this being like 2 and then 2.2 .2 or 2.4 and so on, but actually I'd, I'd like to go ahead and graph the full thing so I'd be able to um, see the pattern if I was to run for one hour instead. So I'm going to try and divide this up and if you look here it's, well, if I go from 0 to 3.6 then that's going to be, well, let's see, 3.6 is close to 4, right? 
So if I divide that by 10, then each, for each fourth of an hour, or for each four tenths of an hour, which works out very well in this case here, because these are all um, multiples of 0.4, then I should represent that on the graph. <clears throat> so if I look here, what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to write down all this all the way across like 0 0.4, 0 0.8, 1.2, because that would kind of clutter up the graph. So I'm going to kind of skip around and get, go ahead and go 0 0.8 here. Again, 0 0.4 would be here, 0 0.8, 1.2. So this would be 1.6 here. 2, and then uh, this would be 2.4. And this would be uh, 2.8. This would be 3.2. This would be 3.6, and this would be 4. Now, for miles, again, I'm going up uh, from, if I want to, I could just represent this data. But if I want to go and be able to figure out how long it would take me to run one mile, I wouldn't be able to do this very easily with that. So I'm going to try and, and do this as if it's in the 20s, up to 20, because that's close to 18. And so if I divide 20 by 10, then I'm going to have each one be 2, 2 miles. So here, this would be 2. And again, I don't want to clutter up too much. So I'm going to put down 4, 6, and then 8, 10, and then 12. And over here, I've got uh, 14, 16, 18, 20. And now I need to do a quick check and see. Well. Do I have everything that's uh, below, is everything below 20? Yes. Is everything below 4 for the hours? Yes. So I now at this point here, I have a pretty good, pretty good idea that I have a good set of data and a good, good way of representing it. So I'm, I'm set to try and graph this. So, so now 2, for 2 hours, which would be snack dab right here between the 1, 6 and the 2, 4. It's 10 miles. So here, I go ahead and I go up two hours. And what I do with my other finger, if I had one, I'd, uh, if I could show this on here, I'd go over to where the 10 would be. And the 10 would be between here, between the, be this line right here, and then the 2 would be right there. So my point is going to be right there. So 2.8 is going to be, again, right there. And 14 is going to be right there. So I do the same thing, 2.8 and 14. And 3.2, see 3.2 is right there, so that's nice. And then 16, look, I have a nice, nice line, don't I? If I go ahead and connect those dots, draw these in a little bit more so you can see. And for 3.6, which would be right there, you can probably already figure out it, it's going to go right there. So that's a pretty good uh, amount of running. I wonder how much this person runs if they're like a marathon or something like that. And I look and I see I could connect these and see that there is a clear pattern. I'm going to show you what I mean in terms of that right here. So. If I go ahead and I go, let me draw a line now with this. So if I go right here and I draw a line between these, I go right through there. And it stops here. But if I wanted to, I could figure out how far I was going. Uh, for four hours, I could just extend that line a little bit and see. Or if I wanted to see how how long it would take me or how far I could run in 0.8 hours, I could extend that line back the other way and it would come down right about here. So that's the that's the importance of graphing and being able to represent this stuff. The big deal is it it just is based on the data set what you do the divisions as uh, the intervals as because that shows you kind of how, how to represent the data. And it's really important. That's probably the toughest part that a lot of kids have problems with. So just give it a shot, and 
We will go over the scheduling class tomorrow. And remember that thing about gas prices. That is hopefully up there. Hopefully it's not going to get to four dollars a gallon because that would be uh, not a good thing. But I'm guessing it will over the summer. So.